Welcome back, Seth Bling here. I used my Super Mario World jailbreak from a couple months back to add support for the Super Scope to my Super Mario World cartridge. And in this video, I want to show you how it works and explain a little bit about how I pulled it off. The Super Scope was a light gun manufactured by Nintendo for the SNES. There were a few games that supported it, most notably Super Scope 6 and Yoshi Safari. I wrote a custom driver in under 256 bytes that allows you to shoot down enemies in Super Mario World using the Super Scope. The driver can be loaded using my Super Mario World jailbreak, which means that it works on normal, unmodified Super Mario World cartridges and Super Nintendos. If you haven't already seen the video about that jailbreak, I put a link in the video description. You should check it out. You can shoot at a lot of different things in-game using this Super Scope add-on. Normal enemies, of course, but also things like moving platforms, info boxes, and Yoshi. You can even shoot out the gold tape and make some levels impossible to finish. You can shoot Bowser, though unfortunately that just softlocks the game. Same with shooting Princess Peach after defeating Bowser. There's unlimited ammo, and I've even included support for the Super Scope's rapid fire switch. My driver lets you use the Super Scope's cursor button to see a cursor wherever you're aiming. It also includes a calibration mode using the Super Scope's pause button, which was pretty standard use for that button. The older NES light guns like the Duck Hunt Zapper worked by flashing hitbox rectangles onto the screen for a couple frames, which meant that those guns could only tell whether you hit a target and had to flash the whole screen to do so. The Super Scope is much more sophisticated, and that additional sophistication allows the Super Nintendo to detect where the Super Scope is pointed at all times without changing anything on screen. This works based on the specific properties of CRT televisions, which were ubiquitous back in the early 90s. CRTs drew one line at a time with an electron beam that scanned across the screen and hit red, green, and blue phosphors, which were painted onto the glass screen. That's where the term scan line comes from. The beam actually drew one pixel at a time, causing the phosphors to light up, then slowly fade back to black. Imagine the Super Scope is pointed at this red circle, detecting the light intensity of the phosphors it's pointed at. Most of the time, it just sees a dark screen. But as the electron beam approaches that part of the screen, suddenly there's a moment where the Super Scope detects phosphors lighting up. Immediately, the Super Scope sends a signal to the Super Nintendo via an infrared receiver that's plugged into controller port 2. Since the Super Nintendo knows exactly what pixel it's drawing at any given time, it's able to extrapolate and store the exact X and Y coordinates of the pixel that the Super Scope saw light up. These coordinates are then used by my driver code to determine where to create an explosion and which enemies were hit. This was a really cool project for me, partially because it finally gave me an excuse to buy a Super Scope, but also because I think it's amazing that it's possible to add support for a completely unrelated peripheral like this without modifying any hardware or making a ROM hack. If you happen to have my Super Mario World jailbreak installed on your cartridge, and you also own a Super Scope, I've included the hex code for this driver in the video description. I do want to thank P4 Plus 2 for providing some help understanding how to use the game's built-in collision detection code, which was really helpful when trying to keep the code under 256 bytes. That's about it. Thanks for watching.